welcome to this issue of Bounce Up Broadcast. And I am so excited about our topic today, although a lot of people might not be happy or excited about the topic of clutter. And today we have a special guest. She is productivity expert, Sandra Lane. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you, MJ. I'm so happy to be here. Oh my goodness. First, I have to say congratulations to you for your TEDx talk. That is awesome. A lot of people, they they want to be a TEDx speaker, and you actually made that happen. That was fun. A great experience. Highly recommend. If it's on your bucket list, keep striving for it. It was on mine, and I am so happy to say that I've done it. Yay! Go you. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. The and the topic was the cost of clutter, which is one of the reasons why we are talking about clutter. Mm -hmm. The clutter is I view it as a domino or a ripple impact. You start with a pow, and then before you know it, there's just one after another after another, and it also impacts so many things. Mm -hmm. from time, from money, productivity, and also impression. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much there. So, okay, you're the expert and we need to jump in. So someone that wants to jump in and start getting rid of clutter, mm -hmm. what is the first step that they need to take? Okay, so I think I would probably approach it from a mindset standpoint first. Like let's get our head around the idea that one, you can do it, and two, you know that it's going to benefit you. So just kind of close your eyes for a second, MJ, and okay. think about what it feels like when you walk into a hotel room. Mm. The clarity, the opportunity for possibility, the clear desk, the comfortable cloud-like bed right? It mm -hmm. is uncluttered for a reason. You know, the, the tchotchkes and artwork is very carefully selected with the intention that they don't want that space cluttered, right? Now, right. Open, your now open your eyes and think about what your office space looks like. Do you have that same clarity? Is it something that you're hoping to strive for? Because there are lots of benefits that come from having a clear workspace because it will allow you to do a number of positive things towards moving your day forward. So let's start with the perception of what people think about you as a worker mm -hmm. based on what your office looks like. It's not fair, but we do it when we judge others based on what they're wearing, right? makeup, their hair, their shoes, what they drive. We do it all the time, right? We do. Right? What is it? Within 30 seconds, we, we already have an impression or we have an idea of the impression of the other person. Exactly. We make that judgment in 30 seconds. Exactly. Well, you can rest assured people are judging you and your work based on what your office looks like. If it's disorganized, boxes everywhere, the perception out there is that you're less conscientious, that you likely don't meet your deadlines, that you're probably not a go-to person, right? And right. that is not an impression you want to put out there, particularly if you are interested in advancing in your company, right? Right, right. Yeah. So there's perception. Oh. And then... Definitely. That makes so much sense, though, because it I mean, I know if I'm going into I'm looking at it from a sales perspective, if I'm going in for an appointment with an with a salesperson who's getting ready to sell me something, if I see a messy office, mm -hmm. it is going to make me especially depending upon what I am going to buy. You know, when we think about purchasing a car. Those little cubicles that the sales professionals are in, they're empty for a reason. So that that definitely makes sense. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So perception is one idea that I think if somebody wants to take an action step towards making a change in their office, 
they need to think about that. They need to embrace the idea that people are judging them based on what their office looks like, and they could be jeopardizing their opportunities for advancement just based on that alone. It may not be fair. You may be getting your work done, but that is the perception that's out there. So perception is definitely one reason to take an action step. And you mentioned it as you introduced this session today, productivity. There is a direct correlation between the work we do and the environment that we are working in. Is it fostering you know, productivity and efficiency throughout your day? Or is the excess clutter that is in your space becoming a visual distraction to you? Focus is so hard today in the office, don't you find? It is. And so with that too, the I also need to have things that help me creativity. Like I have reminders of a trip, you know, so we do need, at least I do, I need those things in, but I do need it to be more streamlined. Right. Oh, I'm not saying that it should look like a hotel um, room. Okay, good. <laughs> no, I think person, your personal tchotchkes and items that motivate you are critical to motivating you to do your work. The question is, how much is too much? If it becomes a visual distraction, that's when you might want to take a look at it, right? Okay. So our focus is definitely impacted by the visual distraction of our stuff, okay? okay. Makes uh, sense. Right. We're also um, inviting the opportunity of wasting time when we have all this excess yeah. clutter, right? Digging right. around, looking for stuff or having to do something over because we can't find it. Right? The time spent because of clutter, searching for items is a waste towards our productivity, right? There's a direct link there. Definitely. You know, Sandra, one of my things that I would find myself doing frequently. And let's let's say hello to Jim Conkle was actually my former co-host. So it's good that he has hopped on and good morning, Dr. Rhonda. Great to have you with us. The So one of the things I found myself that I did quite frequently was I would jot little notes down as reminders. And then I would have like a stack of post-it notes. <laughs> and to, yeah, like, and they would clutter my desk. Right. To get away from that, the one thing that I found was um, I use a Microsoft, sort of like OneNote, but mm -hmm. it's actually in my Gmail. I use that to keep track of my little notes. So now it's off my desk. So what are small things that we can do like that, that's something easy that can help us stay on track? Well, it, I guess it depends on what you need to stay on track with. Right? Okay. And the answer might be a little different, and uh, the mo the medium that you use will be a little different. There are some folks like you that want to go digital, but then like me, I'm old school. I am all about a traditional pen and paper to do list and okay. calendar. So it really depends on exactly what you're looking to track. So if it's ideas that are in advance, far ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, choose your medium, but do store them somewhere. Um, it sounds like you're almost kind of talking about like the clutter that we keep in our heads. And if, if that's what you're driving towards, I strongly suggest that you treat your brain like an in and out box. It is not designed to be a filing cabinet. You get information all day long, little bits of information, mm -hmm. that engine light goes on. You have to pick up something for your son or you have to call someone. You can't store it up here and expect to just simply retrieve it. You have to remove the clutter up here and store it externally somewhere else, whether it's a digital tool that you use, an app on your phone or traditional pen and paper. But you have a higher chance of getting it completed when it's out of here and externally captured. And here's another really important reason to do that. We become so preoccupied and distracted by what we're trying to remember that we are mm. not in the present. We're not fully present in a conversation or in a webinar or reading or having dinner because we're trying to remember what we have to add to our shop list or that we need to call so-and-so before they go to bed. You know, 
we really need to clear out that mental clutter. I'm glad you brought that up. We were going to focus a lot on the physical items, but that is something that also needs to be addressed when it comes to being a productive worker. And, and that goes back to the research of write it down, make it happen. Mm -hmm. So pulling that in, but I had not thought about it as brain clutter. Mm -hmm. So great point there, because I know that I need to get, I, I use my phone a lot to, for notes, such as what you were mentioning. So go in the digital so that it decreases some of the clutter. Um, right. But I had not thought about it as brain clutter. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. You are you alluded to it and I just expanded on it. Way to go, teamwork. <laughs> the, yes, and Dr. Um, Dr. Rhonda had said here that, yes, worrying about remembering things, it does, it does zap our energy. So yeah. good thank point you. there, Rhonda. You are still on point. Yep, you are on thank point. You. Okay, so I had taken us off track a little bit. So let's get back to because really, we want to increase our productivity. And that brain clutter is definitely that's a great step getting rid of that to increase that productivity, and to keep that energy moving forward. So right. what's an, what's the next step? Or what's another, you know, another avenue we can go? Right. So um, in keeping one last tip I want to share with the mindset piece before you actually okay. take some action here is your health. So we talked about perception. We talked about productivity. But think about the stress yeah. that is caused and the anxiety that is caused when you walk into a clutter and disorganized space. Work is already stressful enough. Right. Yes. You don't want to add to that job strain. So that's another motivator to move you towards making some changes in your office if that's the direction you need to go in. Okay, so perception, okay. productivity, and your health. Now, let's dig in with where we can start. So there's three areas that typically clutter up an office. The first is paper, the second mm. is supplies, and then the third is the floor and surface areas of any other furniture you might have. So we can dive okay. into each one of those pieces, okay? Okay, let's start with clutter. Okay. Or, or let's start, sorry, paper. We're talking yes. about clutter. Okay. Paper, yeah. because I think paper is, I don't know, is it is it the biggest part of this? I would think so. You know what, I've been doing this now for 12 years and I'm just amazed that even though we are moving towards a more digital age, paper is still a big part of our, you know, process in work yes. and in home. We just can't get rid of it. And there's a lot of people that are generating it intentionally. <laughs> so the first thing that you want to think about is reducing the paper that you have. What steps can you take to reduce the paper that you have? Junk mail. Um, can you uh, stop printing emails? Is, is there some information that you can not have to print? Can you just store it electronically? Or can you use two sides of a paper instead of just one side? And when it comes to reducing some of the mail you have, if you um, are getting catalogs and direct mail pieces and credit card offers at work, there's uh, the Federal Trade Commission has several websites that are perfectly safe that you can register your address to remove yourself off of those lists. I don't know if you have show notes, uh, MJ, but I can certainly provide those so people can go ahead and sign up for that. Otherwise, I'll just mention it right here. Okay, sure, go ahead. And I can also do the go back in and add comments and put it in the show notes on YouTube because we stream to Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Great. So there's DMA Choice. Dot org. That's for direct mail pieces. Okay. There's catalogchoice.org for catalogs. And then lastly, for credit card offers, there's opt, OPT, out, screen, opt out screen. Okay. Pre screen, pre screen, sorry, opt out pre screen.com. These are all, you can find all of these on the ftc.gov website. Um, the opt-out pre-screen might ask you for a social security number. Don't fill that out. Everybody's always so leery about doing that. You can still opt out from credit card offers, which is really, really useful in terms of reducing your junk mail. It doesn't happen overnight, okay. but you will see a real reduction there. 
So you're reducing the amount of paper yeah. that comes into your office. That's the first step. And Sandra, that is such a great tip. When I moved into my townhouse three years ago, I had received so many credit card offers. It was crazy. And they did. Once I had filled that out, it did reduce. But I did not know about the catalog one. So that's a good mm -hmm. one to know. Yeah, they so. actually list all of the catalogs that are out there and you just check off all the ones you don't want to receive. Okay, good mm -hmm. point. Okay, all right. So what's next after that? So after you reduce, try to take steps to reduce what's coming in, how about editing what's already there? You've got existing files, you've got existing stacks of paper, an in and out box, whatever system you have, assess what's there and see what is relevant. Oftentimes we go into work with the day in and day out of business, not taking the time to really update mm -hmm. our files. We might even have a change of position and still have files from our last position that may no longer be relevant to this job. So you are going to have a couple of categories as you're sorting through, and this is a this is not something that will happen overnight. I'm gonna be, I'm not sugarcoating this here. This is a process. You acquired all of this paper over months, years, mm -hmm. it will take some time to go through it. And it's very important that you honor the retention protocols that your company may have in terms of confidential documents sure. or how long you should hang on to client files, et cetera. So make sure you keep that in mind as you go through your paperwork. A file at a time and decide what's really relevant to keep. Is it active? Is it a current file? Is it something that you use on a regular basis, regular enough that it's worthy of taking up space, right? We only have mm -hmm. a couple of drawers in our desk. Right. So think of it as prime real estate. Is it worth taking up that space? That's the assessment process that you need to go through. So prioritize. Right. Prioritize it, what's worthy of taking yeah, up that space. That space. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And then those there's going to be files that you may need to keep that may not be relevant. But do you have to keep them in that drawer, right? Can right. you keep them, you know, in a locked cabinet in the same room as your office? Or maybe your company has got a room designated for archive files. You're going to pull that out and create a pile for archive and store away. Okay. So there's the keep pile that's going to stay. Okay. And then there's going to be one that will be stored away or archive. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then the junk pile. And the, the junk shred. pile. That's right. And there's okay. going to be that last pile that's going to be shred, toss, recycle, etc. Make sure that you honor, again, your company's protocols when it comes to shredding versus just recycling. Usually, they like to just shred it rather than recycle it. So those are the three piles. As you edit your paper, it's going to be keep, mm -hmm. current, it's active, it's being used. Mm -hmm. store or archive or shred. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Those three. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what is a doable amount of time if someone or that will actually have progress? If you had mentioned one file at a time. So if someone has 15 to 20 minutes a day, will that work? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it, first, you have to embrace the idea that it's not going to happen overnight. But if you can dedicate 15 to 20 minutes a day, you will absolutely make an impact. A few files at a time. Okay. And so, over time, it will happen. We all know we have 15 minutes. We might think we yeah. don't, but we can find 15 minutes. Right. Yeah. So here's what I would do. I would actually put it into your schedule that you are going to spend you know, from 4.45 to 5 o'clock, you are going to sort out through, you know, 10 files. 10 files could be a lot. Or five files. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go back to that. You move. How quickly you make your decisions. That is true. Well, that is true. You know, harder than others. But the important thing is that you're moving the needle forward on this whole project. So someone who has a lot of clutter on their desk, Mm. Now, what do they take a corner at a time mm -hmm. to do? Like, what is a good breakdown for them? Yeah, I would just work from the left and then move to the right. Um, okay. Think about how you use the space, just like the files. Ask yourself, you know, 
if the tools that are taking up this prime real estate are worthy of taking up that space? Mm -hmm. Do you use it regularly? Could it be tucked away in a drawer to make room? Or does it ha is it something I use every day that I need to keep it out, right? And then the placement mm -hmm. of where your items sit is also important in terms of whether you're right-handed or left-handed or how frequently you're on the phone. Are you tucking mm -hmm. it in here? Do you have a headset, right? Those ergonomics are also important in terms of how much you want to keep on your desk. Great if you point. you need certain tools, then those are the ones that are worthy of staying there and the others can get maybe put in the top drawer. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our next one is we did paper. The next one is? Supplies. Okay. Right, so we all need supplies in order to do we our do. job. We need pens and staples and highlighters and paper, right? We all need yes. it. Here's the question how much do you need to keep in your office, right? You right. know, uh, I'm just thinking of like a Costco purchase is 24 highlighters in a package, right? Mm -hmm. 24 pens. How many do you need to take up your pencil cup? So full that now you have to put some pens and pencils in a drawer. Let's just limit it to what can fit in this cup, right? So right. ask yourself, the question you want to ask yourself is how much do I need and can I store those other items either elsewhere in my office, a little further away, keep those items that you use frequently closer to you. This mm -hmm. is just a backup supply. Can you store it further away in your office or is there a supply room, an inventory room where all of those supplies can live? Well, especially in the corporate setting, we don't need to have all of that in a corporate right. setting. We right. can we can leave it in the supply room. I, and, and I will say, I love office supplies. So I have to be very careful because I love them. But I have one, it's a uh, chest of drawers mm -hmm. that I because and I also use them too for training. I use different color post-it notes and different color highlighters and markers, mm -hmm. but I keep those away from my everyday stuff. Right. Yeah. So you know the placement of items. I kind of uh, use the metaphor of the roasting pan in the kitchen. You know how oh, often do we use that roasting pan? One time a year when we make that turkey. <laughs> So it really does not need to be taking up space in our kitchen, does it? Can no, it do does not. Else? So that's how you want to approach some of these supplies, right? And then the, the next piece after you've edited and only keep what you need is to containerize and organize those supplies, right? So you mentioned yes. your pencil cup or a drawer insert for paper clips and rubber bands and the stapler, et cetera. So you want to make sure that everything has a home. Because if it has a home, then you're likely to put it back and you're likely mm -hmm. to find it without a lot of searching later. And definitely that everything needs a home. So Carl, I, <laughs> yes, I'm chuckling because I get it. <laughs> I get it too. And I love nerds. I call myself a productivity nerd. I totally love it. Oh my goodness. I'm a book nerd. So I have to keep, I really have to keep my books. I have one book stand that own it's three shelves. It's probably only, I don't know, 48 inches high. Mm -hmm. And if that's full, something has to go up before another book goes in. It's the only way that I can contain my love for books. Right. Yeah. That's a great practice that I was planning on mentioning in the next and last piece when it comes to organizing our office, and that's like everything else, is the one in, one out rule. You do it with clothes, you should do it with shoes, kitchen gadgets, books, et cetera, and everything in your office. When you bring in or are gifted an item that is from a category, can you let go of an item from that same category, right? How many awards do you need? How many pieces of your kid's artwork need to be on display? If it's starting to feel a little closed in, that's when you might want to make an assessment and practice that one in, one out rule. Good job. Okay. Yeah. And the reason is when I moved, because I've moved a few times in the last 10 years, I had three bookcases of books and I thought no one needs that many. So I had... a. I gave away the bookcases, donated the books, gave those away, and then came up with this system. It's mm -hmm. the only thing that keeps me on track with it. Good for you. Good for you. 
easy, but I love the one in one out because it does help us stay on track. And I will say when I had that many books, it took me a while to find the book that I needed. Yeah. So, well, that that's what it all boils down to is that it can sometimes be a waste of our time in terms of upkeeping and maintaining our stuff. Right. So, yeah. Right. Absolutely. That. So the so I want to go back to the OK, our floor space in our. Right. Yeah. So that's our the last office. piece. We did paper. We did we supply. Did we and did the supplies. last piece is going to be the floor. We have a tendency to do this. If it's a flat surface, we will use it for storage. Right. So we've got we may have bookshelves. We may have a credenza, filing cabinet, chairs in our office. We may have a little hidden secret spot under our desk, too. Ooh. <laughs> Don't store stuff under there either. So you want to go through the same process that we did with the other components, paper and supplies. Edit what you have. Is it necessary to keep? Is it relevant to the work that you're doing now? If it's feeling a little tight, a little cluttered, open up, get some clarity, get some space by letting go of what's no longer a priority for you in this position that you have or in this space that you have. So, and sometimes it means making some tough decisions, particularly when it comes to the personal stuff, right? Those gag gifts from company uh, conferences and parties, you know, how many of those goofy trophies do you need? Um, and keep your favorites of kids' artwork and souvenirs and family photos. I get it. It motivates you to even come to work. I totally understand. But remember, sometimes there can be too much. And it can sure. be the impetus, as you mentioned earlier, clutter breeds clutter. So it could be just the impetus that gets more stuff stuck on those shelves. So you, you'll want to do a good, strong edit of those spaces. Sometimes I feel like clutter, you know, is rabbits. <laughs> it keeps <laughs> producing. <laughs> so... Now, Rhonda, I'm going to put up her, her comment here. Oh, my goodness, Rhonda, you won a $500 gift card to the container store. Oh, I would like to win that. That would be awesome. Yeah, the container store is great. I, I highly recommend it. However, you, you do need to go in there with a plan because it can be a little overwhelming. You, you want to make the most of the money that you have. So do the edit and uh, first in your office space so that you know exactly what to buy when you go in there. You know the size to get, you know how much space you have on this shelf for this basket. The only way you're going to know that is if you do the edit piece first. But yes, the containerizing and organizing is the next piece that comes after that. So I'm sure you had a wonderful time with that shopping spree, Ron. I'm sure she did. And she didn't invite us. She's so lucky. <laughs> The so with it oh, and measuring, you had mentioned mm -hmm. make sure that the basket fits on. That was because shelves can be very odd. So making sure that you know the size that will fit and how many you can get. So good. Well, how many that you need? You know, if you clear out, if you are doing a great job in clearing out your space, instead of you know getting four baskets, you may only need two. But the only way you'll know that is if you do the edit piece first. Right. I, right. I have, there's a lot of people that want to jump, skip that step and go right to the shopping step because it's so fun. It's pretty, right. it's beautiful, but you have to do the edit piece first and then walk into that store with the objectives of exactly what you need with all the measurements that you need and how much you need to buy. And when we think about editing, if we think about it as a writing a book or reading a book, you don't want to read a book that the author kept everything in, regardless of if it made sense or not, or if it was duplicated. The same with as we're writing a book, we need to edit it. We need to edit out what really we don't need that the reader doesn't need to know about. So looking at it from that perspective too. Absolutely. So editing the way we look. We're not going to put everything, you know, we own as an accessory on mm -hmm. at one time. Right. It's too much. You have to prioritize and you really need to discern what's most important now and what you use the most. What's serving you? 
Sandra, can you give us a statistic on productivity? So what either we lose in productivity, mm -hmm. the cost of it, before we go into a summary. So that sure. anybody who's listening, they know how crucial it is to really look at their space and edit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have a couple that all basically drive towards the same result. And that is, is that we're losing time in our day. Stephanie Wilson, who is the author of The Organized Executives, say that we lose an hour a day because of disorganization. Mm, right? What we could accomplish in an hour. Can you imagine? And then, of course, we lose a couple of hours a day because of distractions. And mm. while the, a lot of the distractions may be digital distractions, such as social media and shopping, et cetera, but some of those distractions are that visual distraction of the clutter in our space as well. So, yeah, it's a, it, it, it wastes our time in many ways and in some cases money. Right. That equates mm -hmm. money. If you're in business for yourself or if you're an employee for a company, that time equals money. Definitely. Because if you think about it, if we're losing one hour a day, that's five hours. That's mm -hmm. more than half of a day. And you times that by a salary or in business by, you know, what when you own a business. Oh, that's five hours. I could have, you know, worked with a client. Makes right. a big difference there. It is. And then sadly, it will impact that employee outside of work. They will be stressed about what they still have left to do. They may have to miss a soccer game or dance recital because they had to work late or work on the weekends. So, you know, it, it's it's really it's, it's not good all the way around for the company as well as the employee. And, and that's what they want to focus on. You know, people, individuals should be focusing on the improvement of their quality of work and productivity at work impacts their life outside of work too. Not just what happens to the company's bottom line. It also impacts them as well. Good point. Thank you for that insight. Mm -hmm. Could you, we've covered a lot today. Could you give us a summary? You know, sure. what are two, two or three takeaways today? Right. So any space in your office you can make an impact with just a, a small amount of time. Just if you want to work in 15 minute increments, if that's all you have, that's great. Schedule it and do what you can yeah. in that 15 minutes and keep moving that needle forward. Remember, you want to reduce and edit what you have if it's too cluttered and then containerize and organize what's left. And then lastly, you want to keep this space looking the way it is, right? So you have to take time and schedule time to maintain it. Whether it's a end of day protocol that you have when it comes to buttoning up your office, tidying everything up, putting it all away, or at the end of the week. But stay on top of it so that that clutter doesn't start to pile up again. Oh, makes sense. And I love the visual of the hotel room. So when the first thing that I thought of when you were talking about it was the desk in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. Like I am so thrilled to open up my laptop backpack and get out my laptop and put it on that desk because there isn't anything else and, and open it up and start to work. So keeping that visual in mind, I think that alone can push someone to really think about their clutter. Yes. And that visual is not a fantasy. We can do that for ourselves. Wrap up at the end of every day. Spend 15 minutes wrapping up your desk. So great. Sandra, how can someone get a hold of you? I have a website that has all the information about me, organizationlane.com. And there are links to my LinkedIn page, Instagram, Facebook, you can get my book on that page. You can sign up for my monthly productivity blog on that website. So it's all there. Okay. Awesome. And it was, can you give us the website one more time, please? Sure. Organization Lane, all one word, organizationlane.com. And it makes sense because it's organization and then your last name. So. Right. And my tagline is getting you on the road to productivity. Which is, I, I love it. I love the tagline. I also love how you used your last name in there with your website. So, all right. Thank you so much for thank all you. the great information you have given us today. And we hope that everybody who is watching, they will be able to edit their space and increase their productivity. 
So this is MJ Calloway getting ready to sign out. Remember to make it a bounce up day.